welcome back to Dr. Vipin's Biotech and Bioinformatics Classroom, and uh, uh, welcome back to the Python track. And here in this last lecture, if you remember, we have talked about how to install Anaconda, right? So, so this is your lecture number 10. Uh, this is uh, more of a mute and a small video, and then we have a more detailed video here that is installing Anaconda. So today we are going to talk about uh, generating a complement and reverse complement of the uh, given input DNA sequence. I'm sure you would have gone through the earlier lecture here that is playing with the strength that will come in handy. You can click the I button on the top in case you want to have a look at this lecture first. So let's get started. And we also start today with Jupyter Notebook. Right? So when you install Anaconda, along with it, you'll have the installation of Jupyter Notebook. So let me give you a look and feel of Jupyter Notebook first, and then we start with the actual program. So you could go to your search box here, type uh, Jupyter Notebook. And if you can see here, there's Jupyter Notebook Anaconda is showing here. And if you double click, your notebook will be launched. So when you open your Jupyter Notebook on the file menu, you can go here and you can say new notebook. And when you say new notebook, you'll have this Python 3 IPY kernel coming up. You can click on this. This will help you open a brand new Jupyter Notebook. So here you are, this is a new Jupyter Notebook. You could name it here. You could call it, let's say, uh, test.py and press enter, right? So here you are, this is a test.py. In case you want to add more chunks, you can go to insert and you can say insert cell above or insert cell below. Either way, it's going to insert. So let's say we insert a cell above. Here you are. And then here you can start writing your program, right? The program today is to basically generate the reverse complement of a DNA sequence, right? So first, of course, you want the user to input the DNA sequence. So you say sequence is equal to input. And then uh, you have your round brackets. And within the round brackets you, and within double quotes, you, uh, you prompt the user to submit a DNA sequence. So here you are, you say submit a DNA sequence. You go to cell and you say run cells. So here we are, we submit a DNA sequence. Let's say we submit AATTGGCC press enter, right? So we know we are giving eight nucleotide sequence. And as I have been emphasizing earlier as well, uh, when you're testing a program, uh, the initial input should be uh, small so that you can also manually calculate what is the expected result. And then you match your expected result with what the program is giving. So here we have given an eight nucleotide sequence. We know there are two A's, two T, two G, two C in consecutive position, right? Then, of course, first we calculate the length of the sequence and, you know, the calculating the length of a string, the command is LEN, right? And then the argument would be the, uh, the object name into which the sequence is set, so which here is the sequence. So we say sec underscore length, this is the variable name. Remember, variable name has to be descriptive so that you know what is the value contained in that variable. You could also have written x equal to length sequence, but then 10 days later, you may not remember what it means. So therefore, uh, the one convention of giving the variable names is, or the object name is that the object name has to be descriptive. By reading the object name, you should know exactly what it is standing for and what value it can potentially hold. So here you are, second score len equals to len sequence. And then of course you're printing the sequence. So we say print and then we say F, that is to format. And then we say sequence is, and then the value that you need to print is kept under curly brackets comma, length is, and then again, the actual object name that you want to finish, uh, that you want to publish is kept under a curly bracket. So this is one way of formatting your print in Python, right? So now let's run this part. And when you run this, sequence is AATTGGCC, comma, the length is eight, right? Now, uh, since we are going to convert the sequence into its reverse complement, so first we're going to complement it, and then we're also going to read it in the reverse order, right? And if you remember, uh, we talked of a method called replace for strings, uh, and you could convert your DNA sequence to RNA sequence by uh, using the replacement. So this is not a part of your uh, generation of reverse complement. I'm just showing you the functioning of the replace method, right? So here you are, you say RNA equals to Sequence dot replace, and if you want to convert a DNA sequence into RNA, all you need to do is to convert the thymines into uracil. So it takes two arguments. First, what is the the letter that is to be replaced, and what is the letter it is to be replaced with? That is your second argument, right? And then you say print RNA. So if you run this part now, so how do you run a chunk? You just 
keep your cursor at the end of the chunk or anywhere in between. Uh, go to cell and you say run cells. And here you are. So this was your AAUU GDCC, which is a RNA equivalent of the DNA sequence AATT GDCC, right? Now, uh, one important thing is that you're not sure whether the uh, DNA sequence that has been input is in the uppercase or lowercase. So what we do is we generally, as a convention, whatever be the input, we first make sure that it is converted to uppercase, right? So here you are, you say sequence equals to sequence dot upper, and then you close your brackets so there is nothing in the argument. And then you say print sequence. So when you run this, we've already given the sequence an uppercase, so it should not be a problem. So you can go to cell and you say run cell. Let's say we were to give the sequence in small letters. So let's uh, undo whatever we've given until now and remove all the results and then move forward and give the sequence, submit the sequence in small letters. So here you are. Well, how can you clear out all the output that has been shown up till now? So you can go to cell and you say all output and you can say clear. Right? All output is cleared. You can now start afresh and run each chunk again. So here you are. You go to the first chunk you say cell and you say run cell. And this time I'm giving it in small letters. So A, A, T, T, G, G, C, C. And you press enter here. Here you are. Then you calculate the length of the sequence. So again, you go to the second chunk and you say run cells. Here is the length of the sequence. Then we can leave this part because it's not directly relevant to us. We come back here and we convert our sequence that we had given in lowercase into uppercase. So here we are, we say cell and you say run cell. Here is your sequence in uppercase now. Now we move on to complementing. So remember for complementing, A has to be replaced with T, T has to be replaced with A, G has to be replaced with C, and C has to be replaced with G. So now generating the complement of the sequence should be easy. All you have to do is to replace A with T, T with A, C with G, and G with C. But there is a small catch here. And let me show you how you can go wrong if you don't replace the capital letters with their complementary small letters, right? So here we are, we can put up here, let's say we say complement one, one is equal to S-E-Q-U-E-N-C-E -E -E sequence dot replace. And let's say we first replace A with T, right? And then we, in the next statement, we replace all thymines with Adenine, right? So we say complement two is equal to complement one dot. And let's put it in a separate chunk so that uh, we know that this is not part of the main chunk here. Let's say we say cut and we insert a chunk above, right? And we put it here, right? Also, what we want to do is to print at each step. So we say print and we say complement one. And then we also print complement two and see what is coming up finally in complement two. So we say print complement two, right? And for the purpose of comparison, let's also print out the original sequence. So here you are at the top, we say print S E Q U E N C, right? So here we are, we are first printing the original sequence. Then we do the first round of complementation and convert all adenines to thymines. We print that sequence. Then we convert all thymines to adenines and print that sequence. Right? So here you are, this is our original adenine AATTGGCC. Then in the first statement, which is here, if you see, we have replaced adenine with thymine. So the first two adenines get replaced with thymine. The rest of the sequence remains the same, right? Now this is our sequence that we take over for replacement of uh, thymines with adenines. So now if you see there are four thymines and they get replaced with adenine straight away. So this is something where we've gone wrong here in, with, with respect to the logic. Now we have the remaining part, which is GGCC. And then we come to the third statement here where we replace G with C. So you get uh, this one here, right? So you have the replacement of GG with CC. 
And then in the last statement, you have the replacement of C with G. So it is back again to four Gs. So this is, as is very clear, is not the complement of the original sequence. So we need to find a smart way to address this. And one smart way of addressing this is to do a substitution where you replace a capital A with a small t. Next time when you're replacing a capital T with a small a, you're only substituting for the capital T, not for what is a small t. So therefore, this will remain as such and not converted to adenine, while a capital T will get converted to a small adenine again, right? And what we also do here is we combine all replace statements into a single line, right? So this is our final replace statement here. We say complement is equal to sequence dot replace capital A with a small t dot replace capital C with lowercase g dot replace capital T with lowercase a and dot replace uppercase g with lowercase c, right? And then you say print complement. And then, of course, uh, this will be in lowercase letters. So you want the uppercase letters, so you do a complement dot upper to get the uppercase letters. And then finally, you print your final complement sequence. And what we can also do is we can print the original sequence for our reference. So we say print, right? And we can say O R I G I N original. sequence and right here you are so now let's run this and see what we get so here you are you go to cell and you say run cells so here is your original sequence a a t t g g c c is your complement in lowercase coming from this statement in the program print complement and then of course you have the final conversion to uppercase complement here. And, and now you can compare. So the two adenines at the 5 prime end replaced with two thymines. The next two thymines replaced with two adenines. The next two guanines replaced with two cytosines. And the next two cytosines replaced with two guanines. So here is our complement of the sequence. Now I'm sure you know what is the difference between a complement and reverse complement. So a reverse complement is the complement read from the reverse end, right? And that is because for the other strand, the five prime end is here and the three prime end is here, right? So now we want to do a reverse of the sequence. So, so if you remember again from playing with strings, uh, if you want to print this uh, string in reverse order, you could simply say complement, that is the name of the string, and then in uh, square brackets, two colons minus one. So here is our sequence complement, and we print it in the reverse order by using this notation, two colons minus one. We equate this to reverse complement, and then we print the reverse complement here, right? So here you are. Let's run this and see if we get the reverse complement. And also, let's print the original sequence. So you have the original sequence here. We'll say print S-E, S-E, Q-U-E-N-T-E, -E, right? what we can do is we can make some uh, statements so that we know what we are printing. So we will do this. We say print original sequence, right? And we'll keep some space so that uh, everything comes in properly at the position where it is required and corresponds. Then we say print R E V E R S E reverse complement complement of the S E Q U E N C E sequence is, and then we close this and we put a comma, and there you are. So we will also adjust this so that the sequences come at corresponding positions. So we can do this. I guess this should be fine and this should give us the exactly the sequence that we want. So here we are. Let's now run this and uh, uh, you say cell and you say run cells. And here you are. This is the original sequence A, A, T, T, G, G, C, C. And here is your complement. So if you see here, 
TT corresponds to the AA at the five prime end here. This is the five prime end for the uh, complementary strand. Then you have two AA corresponding to this TT. Then you have two CC corresponding to these GG. And then finally, at the start in the reverse complement, you have GG, which is corresponding to the CC at the end of the original sequence. So this is your reverse complement, right? And uh, if I may ask you a question, then uh, what is the reverse complement for GC? So do that and tell me 